There you go. Oh, you fell victim to my cheeky rig. It's fucking good, too. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. All right, buddy. I'll let you go. Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I want to talk to you about the Jika rig. Yeah, the Jika rig. Now this is a you know a rig that you may not have heard of before. It, it's been out for more than a decade and it came from Asia, specifically Japan, where the fish are heavily pressured, the lakes are heavily pressured, and those bass, they see the same lures and the same presentations day in and day out. And so the Japanese need to come up with new and innovative ways to present lures in, in a manner that the fish haven't seen before and that's going to get them to bite. And that's where the Jika rig came from. It actually does that. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about this because this is a really successful way of fishing. I want to talk about the rig itself, some of the key advantages. I want to talk about how to rig it in different ways you can use that. And also I want to talk about how to fish it. Okay, there's several different ways you can fish it. So let's talk about it here. This is the Jika rig. See that? It's kind of odd looking. You got this weird dangly weight and you have the hook here. But if you look a little bit closer, you'll notice there's a split ring right there. Can you see that? I know it's kind of hard to tell in this light, but there's a split ring. So the hook is not attached to the weight, rather the split ring is attached to the hook and the split ring is attached to the weight. And you notice also the weight's got this nice split split ring, you know, this uh, snap hook. Sorry, <laughs> this snap, which you can attach to the hook. That enables you to swap this weight out without having to re-rig the whole thing like you would a Texas rig. Okay, so now I wouldn't say that this replaces a Texas rig or a jig, but it, it augments it. This really works well in those heavily pressured situations or when the bass, when the, they're just not biting. You know, the bite's off, that's where this shines. So let's talk about some of the key advantages to this. First of all, as you can see the hook, it dangles from the, from the weight. It's loose. So that enables whatever bait you have tied on here to, to move freely about. It falls more naturally. It pendulums and swings and undulates and it looks more natural and it looks more lively. So the bass are more apt to bite it. Also, with this weight hanging down here. So you tie to the you tie to the split ring. Not the hook, but the split ring. So that also enables the weight, you know, the, the, the bait to move around more. But it also means that this weight hangs below the line. The line attaches here. So what that does is it falls straight down. And that enables a couple things. First of all, when you're flipping and pitching, for example, it goes through cover a bit better. It can get through those branches and stuff where the weight that normally, if you got the line tied in the front here, the line can wrap on something and pull it, and now you got the <laughs> it's hanging upside down in the branches or something. Well, this makes its way down through that cover a little bit easier through the weeds, that sort of thing. But also because it falls straight down, you can target things better. For example, when you when you cast out, especially deeper water, like say five to ten feet or deeper, uh, with a Texas rig or a jig, it tends to pendulum down a little bit. Particularly if you you know you don't have slack line, but even with slack line, it'll pendulum a little bit towards you. With this, it falls straight down. So that enables you to target things that are butted up against something. Say for example, a bridge piling or a seawall or a dock piling or something like that. You can get to them easier with a rig like this. So another key advantage is that you have better hookups. Have you ever guys if you guys ever had this happen to you before? You are fishing a Texas rig bait. You get a bite, set the hook, mm, got that fish on, you reel him in, get him in, and something, boink, it comes off. You reel that bait in, and you take a look at it, and that hook has barely even come out of the bait, if at all. What happened? <laughs> well, what happened is that the weight got in the way of the hook set. You see, sometimes what happens is, you know, these fishes, the bass's jaw is a lot stronger than what people think, and it'll clamp down on that 
on that lure. Sometimes it sucks the whole bait in, clamps down on that lure. Now you've got the weight that's, you know, this close to the fish's mouth, you know, eighth of an inch or so. And you set the hook Well, the weight hits his lip, inner lip, inner mouth. And as long as that fish has that mouth closed, you have him. But that bait barely moved inside his mouth. So the hook didn't have a chance to pop out, let alone get into his jaw. So literally, you're fighting the fish back as long as he has his mouth closed. And as soon as he opens his mouth, well, out comes the lure. And now you get this Texas rig plastic that comes back where you don't even have to re-rig it. You just start casting again. <laughs> I guess that's an advantage, right? Well, the Jika rig, see the weight swings back. So when you set the hook, it's nothing but hook. So you get better hookups. It's much, much better hookup ratio with this. So if you're getting fish that aren't maybe biting very well, holding on it for very long, or you're missing hook sets, you might want to switch over to this and give it a try. One other key thing about this rig that's really cool is you can use it for punching. You can heavy up, get a heavier weight here, and what happens is when you throw it over that thick matted vegetation, because the shape of this is more of a cylinder, it's got a point on it, it goes through that, that cover really well, and once it punches through, it pulls the weight and the line through. So what that means is that you can use lighter weight than you would use for traditional punching. And what that equates to is once it gets through that cover, it falls at a slower rate and a more tantalizing rate. And that often triggers more bites. Got one. Nice. <laughs> Threw out there to the bushes. A little bit deeper, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Come here. Oh, you've been caught. You've got a big old hole in your mouth there, buddy. Little buck bath. Bye bye. So as you can imagine, with a bare hook like this, you can rig pretty much any plastic bait you want on it. Right? This happens to be a 3 aught EWG hook. Actually, this whole setup here is from Gamakatsu, and they call it the Geeka Rig. I think you can buy a similar setup from Bass Pro Shops called the Zika Rig. So I don't know why marketers do this. Jika Rig, Zika Rig, Geeka Rig. It's like, it's like the Alabama Rig all over again. Right? A Rig, Alabama Rig, Umbrella Rig. It's all the same thing. Why do they do that? I don't know. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Side note. But anyway, you can have any kind of hook you want. So you can go to a larger size hook and use a larger, larger size bait or downsize to say a one aught and use a, like a three inch finesse bait, your finesse worm or maybe a, a grub, something along those lines. So it's very, very versatile. You can use it in a variety of conditions. I like this Gamakatsu one because it's a stout hook and I use it for pitching and, and throwing around heavy cover and heavy weeds. Now that changes though kind of what rod and reel you would use depending on the size of hook you're, you're using and where you're throwing it. So for something like this, I'm, I've got a stout hook, three out hook, I'm throwing it around heavy cover. So in this instance, I'm going to throw it with, with heavier equipment. I'm going to use braid in this instance because it's vegetation and wood. So I'll pick 50 pound braid, say for example, Seaguar Smackdown braid on a heavy power, a seven foot to seven four foot rod, fast action rod with a real, you know, speed isn't the essence of this, this rig here. So I can go with like a six one to six six to one gear ratio. Um, six one to one, I'll be specific guys. I had someone yell at me at Facebook or on, on <laughs> YouTube. Six one to one gear ratio or up to a six six to one gear ratio. And, you know, that would be great for throwing around that heavy cover. But now if I don't have cover that is, is thick or maybe I'm throwing on lily pads, sparser vegetation, throwing around docks, then I can lighten up, maybe use not so much of a flipping hook here, but just a regular three-out hook or four-out hook or even a two-out hook and use like 15-pound fluorocarbon line, for example, like Seaguar and Vizix fluorocarbon. Throw that around those, those uh, areas with a seven-foot, seven-one, medium heavy power rod 
with a fast action tip. And I'd use the same reel, same sort of thing. Now, if you want to go a smaller size hook and do more finesse, product, uh, finesse presentation, like a one on, use like a 16th ounce weight here, you can use that and throw it in, you know, clear water, not a whole lot of obstructions, probably more rocky. There, I would lighten up. I would use six pound line, fluorocarbon line, maybe Seaguar Tatsu line. Throw that with a spinning outfit, like a medium power, a seven foot fast action rod with a spinning reel that's in the 200 to 2500 range. There you go. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> You're right in the nose, little guy. <laughs> okay, so quick, 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 and I'll let you go. <clears throat> Got you right in the nose again. Stop, 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 stop. Nice hook. You got it right in the roof of the mouth. Nice. Another little guy, another little buck bass. All right. Another little buck Magica bass. Rig. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about fishing it. Now, of course, I've talked about pitching and, and flipping and throwing it around heavy cover, and I think this works really well around that. You don't get as much gunk and junk you know, wadded up around. You're not picking up a lot of weeds and stuff on this rig. So it works really well in those situations. All you need to do is when you throw it out, there's two things. If you get it into a bush and the line goes down there and you drape it over, say, a little twig or a branch, once it gets down there, just lift it up a little bit off the bottom, just enough so the weight's maybe just barely touching or dangling the bottom. What happens is your line is attached here, right, on the split ring. The bait sits horizontally now, whereas if you're on a Texas rig and the line was attached here, it would sit like that. You'd lift it up. But instead, it's now horizontal. And you can just jig that line just a little bit on a branch or a twig and hold it in place. And this bait's going to dangle and dance and move around. It's going to look really lively. It's a different look, a different presentation than what the fish are used to seeing. And that can trigger a bite. Another way to fish it is say you're, you've got it on, along the weed line or next to a bush or, or a shrub or you, you don't have the line draped over anything. Once you get it to land, lift up a little bit in here, instead of, don't lift and hop. This is what we're used to doing with, with, with Texas rigs and with jigs. Don't do that with this rig. Instead, lift it up and let it glide. Maybe pop the rod just, a, you know, the rod tip just so it quivers just a little bit, but just lift it up a little bit and let it glide. So what happens is the bait comes up and now it glides along the bottom and then lands. Okay, it looks like something swimming along the bottom now. It's got a horizontal presentation. Okay, I like that a lot. That really looks like something that's feeding off the bottom, moving up, coming back down, comes up, moving back down, just feeds. So it's a different kind of look, and a lot of times you get a lot of bites that way because the fish aren't accustomed to seeing that presentation. There's no warning bells that go off that make them think it's artificial. It looks normal, like something swimming along the bottom. So you get a lot of bites that way. And that's, that's a lot of where my bites come from. If I don't get it on the initial fall, I get it when I'm gliding it along the bottom like that. <sighs> Woo! Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come here. Nice fish. There we go. That's better. Look how white he is. Yeah, he's, he's light. Yeah, he's light color, all right. <laughs> he's eating. Yeah, he is. Nice. Good he looks fish. Bigger. Boy. That works. That works. <laughs> Jika rig. All right, let's let you go. Off you go. <laughs> Along those lines, one of the things I've been experimenting with is using uh, swimming worms. Swimming worms like eight inches or longer, big worms. 
and I found that it works a little bit better than a Texas rig because with a Texas rig you got that nose up presentation you're bringing along especially with those longer worms they kind of swim through the water like this well with the Jika rig because the weights down below it holds it down kind of offsets the pull on the line they balance each other out they balance each other out and guess what your worm swims horizontally okay it looks normal it looks like something that would normally swim in the water and that could be the difference between getting bites guys it's just a little subtle things it's not a major difference but it's those subtle things especially when the bite is tough that's when the Jika rig shines so give it a shot guys I think you're gonna really like it I don't think it replaces a, a Texas rig or replaces a jig but it's something to pull out when the bite is really super tough this can save the day I hope that helps for more tips and tricks like this visit bassresource.com